we're envisioning the transformation of this Namdi Aziku International Airport into the best airport in Africa. It is the only environment where an armed carrying personnel will walk in and surrender his arm to the aviation security. At airport city, which we call Aerotropolis, is in the offing. Even an aviation university, when you come into the airport, you come in happily and you get out of it thinking, why do I have to leave? We go to other countries and we see how these things are working. When others are doing it in other countries, those who are doing it in those countries do not have two heads. They have only one. Um, a standard is a standard anywhere. Hello, my name is Adachi Uchedo and this is Adachi Uchedo's large race. I'm at Namdi Azikiwe International Airport and I've come to meet with the regional manager of the airport, Kabir Mohammed. Hello, Kabir. Good to see you again. Good to see you too, my dear. I've been touring this airport and it's big and beautiful and has been up and running since 1980. 82. 82, yes. It was commissioned in 1982 with its first... Uh, manager that was appointed sometimes in July of 1982. That was before the commissioning. Uh, Alaji Kumashi, who incidentally is still alive. And uh, the airport has had about 14 managers, that is myself inclusive. And interestingly, of all the 14 managers except one, are all still alive. Of interest also is the fact that one of the managers of the airport eventually even became the managing director of our organization as engineer Sally Dunoma. What makes this airport strategic? Well, to start with, it's uh, situated in the federal capital territory of the country, Nigeria. More like the center of the country. It links all other parts of the country to the northern part and currently operates like a, a domestic hub because most of the flights that uh, operate within the country do have there are stopovers or terminate some of their own flights here but then they also do come here to carry on other passengers to other parts of the country like uh, far north either the northeast or uh, the north south itself and then for north central that is just within its immediate reach it's uh, very close by most of the states around the north central uh, just about an hour and a half or two hours drive the only airport that has a metro station near it. So these are some of the few things that makes it very unique. And this is the second largest and biggest airport in Nigeria in terms of uh, capacity and then landmarks. That's right. And it is the gateway into the federal capital territory of the country. And as such, we do tag it at times as protocol airport. What do you mean by protocol airport? Yeah, because this is where our president leaves and you receive visiting presidents and heads of states and heads of governments of various countries. This is where our government seat is, so you have to be ready to receive ministers, permanent secretaries, uh, chief executives of government agencies and parastatals, and so on and so forth. These sites are like permanent fixtures here? Yes, they are. Yeah. How many terminals does this airport have? It has about five. We have the cargo terminal. We have the Pilgrims Terminal, we have the General Aviation Terminal, we also have the International Terminal, as well as the Domestic Terminal, five in all. And the runway? We have only one, but then the orientation, uh, it's well, what we call the 04 and then the 22 end of the runway. And it's about uh, 3,600 uh, meters, which is about three and a little above uh, half kilometers. But in the most recent uh, months, the federal government approved the addition of 12,000 hectares of land to cater for additional second runway, MRO, cargo terminals, an airport city, even an aviation university. Okay, oh wow. Yeah. Are you still planning to have an airport city? Yeah, it's uh, as part of the aviation roadmap that is uh, been championed by the Honorable Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadi Abakar Sirika. At the airport city, which we call Aerotropolis, is in the offing, and I think the process has also gone far. Okay, so let's look at other facilities that you have. When people travel abroad, there are a lot of things they look out for. 
the ambience, some of the things they check. The earlier tour of the airport you've had, mm. you've seen that uh, we've just finished the installation of our self-checking counters. The whole essence of that is also to reduce human interaction so that you can come and do your uh, facilitation seamlessly. And very soon also we are going to have an e-gate whereby all you need to do is come and swipe your boarding pass and uh, you're already past that check and then you just be heading to the immigration counters for persons with disability. Domestic terminal. Domestic terminal. Okay. We've created ramps so that uh, vehicles that will be bringing in passengers with that special need can be uh, at least uh, they, they can park easily and be wheeled out of the vehicles and then into the terminal. We have uh, elevators so that at least they will be aided to board their flights. Well, we didn't just do that. We have uh, a uh, collaboration with an NGO that has provided us with an elevator that can now lift up a person with disability up to the level of the aircraft so that then that person will be ramped into the aircraft easily. Okay. Until now, that has to be done uh, manually. Okay, that's lovely. And that's all that you will have for this local airport, domestic? Yeah, for now, that's what we have because at, at the international mm. terminal, you don't need that. If uh, a person with disability can just be wheeled through a wheelchair yes. and uh, you can use the any of the fingers mm. to uh, walk through into the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, elevators have the braille for the blind. They are equipped with voice whereby it will tell you when the elevator is open, once you are inside. You will be able to hear that, uh, okay, this is the floor where you are and then uh, where you might uh, likely be going into. That's for at least the blind mm. that uh, may not be able to see all these signages there. While the brothers are there for them to fill and then uh, press. Yeah. Well, like you know, at least the deaf could see so they will be able to press <laughs> the buttons and uh, help themselves with that. That's at the international terminal. And some of these are things we mostly see in other countries. And uh, we're putting all this together because we want to envision, we're envisioning the transformation of this Namdi Aziku International Airport into the best airport in Africa. We go to other countries and we see how these things are working. And as such, we want to ensure that when you are in here, you also feel that yes, you are in an airport that is not just called international, but an international by standards. When others are doing it in other countries, those who are doing it in those countries do not have two heads. They have only one. Um, a standard is a standard anywhere. As such, uh, having resumed here, I met a group of staff that are very passionate about their job and the thing about the passion is not about the qualification, it's about uh, that feeling that all they require is the push and the drive. And uh, ever since my resumption of just been walking day and night trying to put all those things together, and uh, I can say proudly that uh, this have opened a new chapter in my belief in the Kandu spirit of the Nigerian man and woman. Because as it is, anybody who has traveled here the, within the past few months that uh, we've uh, re-energized ourselves can genuinely tell you that yes, Abuja Airport is working and working it will continue to be. The relationship, the kind of cooperation that you have with different agencies. The airport is a complete system and uh, we call it a family, the aviation family, which means or which makes it um, uh, impeccable on all of us mm. to work together. Mm. Uh, one agency cannot do it alone. We have the immigration, the customs, the drug law enforcement agency, the animal quarantine, agricultural quarantine services, the handlers and so on and so forth. And uh, 
each one of these agencies has a role to play in the running of uh, the airport mm. without which the other person's job will naturally be affected. As such, the kind of collaboration and support we've been receiving from all the agencies put together is very tremendous. We can only say to them, thank you for making life easy for us and thank you for making this airport what it is today and for what it will continue to be tomorrow. Okay, what is your dream for this airport? Make it the best airport in Africa. I don't want to be over ambitious to challenge the rest of the world. Having known that uh, the Doha airport is currently the best airport in the world, followed by Changi in Singapore as well as uh, Incheon in Seoul. Um, when you look at the best 10 airports in the world, which range between the Frankfurt, the Dubai airport, Heathrow, and so on and so forth. So we want to work within what we know we'll be able to achieve. Okay. That is to challenge any airport in Africa. Currently in Africa, I think is is Durban, uh, Durban in South Africa. Uh, I'm trying to remember oh, the Otambo. other one. Otambo yeah, I think too. it's Otambo, but it's Dur Durban seems to be the first, and then I think Otambo. Mm. But then. We want to, we're challenging them. No, we want, we're already challenging them to, towards that. And I believe within the shortest possible time, we'll catch up on them, we'll, we'll surpass them. So what are you doing to make that happen? Okay. We're automating everything. Reducing human interface. Making uh, facilitation seamless. Trying to give passengers that five-star travel experience. And this is going to be both at the international terminal as well as the domestic. We want, when you come into the airport, you come in happily and you get out of it thinking, why do I have to leave? Why don't I stay and keep these people company? When you do that, it's good business for us. Because commercial offerings that are springing up within the airport will make money from yeah. your presence. The airport is like a ready-made market mm. where all that matters in the country pass through. Yeah, it's like a captive environment. That's right. So part of the uh, interesting parts of it is the advertisement opportunities. We also have uh, spaces for shops, for restaurants, for duty-free shops, coffee shops including even meetings. We currently have a conference room that we do use for commercial purpose. Recently we upgraded it to give it uh, a very exquisite look and uh, super touch mm -hmm. so that when you don't want to have your meeting inside the city and you are just arriving into the country and all you want to do is just have the meeting and probably wait for your next flight, we have that facility available. Okay. And uh, all you need to do is ask. We give it to you, we pay a fee, and we move on. I noticed there's a lot of art work around the airport. I think airport these days are becoming like a museum. When I mentioned that five-star experience, mm. it's because uh, the airport as a gateway for arriving and departing passengers, it tries to tell you the kind of society to expect. And sometimes a travel experience starts with you coming into the airport. So we want you to come in and at least get excited with these artworks you see around. And sometimes it also gives opportunity for those who did some of those paintings to advertise their product. And when you come in here and you're happy with what you see, you try to find out how you might probably be able to uh, also get such paintings. We are expecting artists to even be doing exhibitions here. You want to do any exhibition on our corridor, which is usually sometimes a stretch of about two to three hundred or four hundred meters along the line. You come and do your exhibition display mm. and uh, passengers that will be traveling could see something of interest and buy and travel with it. Or if it is on arrival, they can take it home. That's why you see most of those artworks around. General advice for any passenger passing through this airport. What's your advice? One of the most important aspects of this is uh, to ensure that all your travel documents 
are intact and genuine so that uh, when you come in, nobody will be telling you social -so documents you're having is genuine or not genuine. That sometimes you'll find out that they were not uh, properly documented and then they will have issues. It causes them some delays. Or when you're, tra or when you're arriving, you do not have your travel permit. And uh, when the health officials try to take you through, some of the people will get angry that nobody asks them about this anywhere across the globe. But policy is a policy. If you check your documentation wherever you are travel, uh, traveling to, check online. There is so much information to guide you. So get your documentation properly. Also understand what you can and what you cannot travel with. Because all the security checks that we do put inside the airport are not just for the good of the airport itself. It's for your own good as well. Because we want you to travel safely. If you may have noticed, you will know that the airport is one of the most safest and secure environments. It's only, it is the only environment where an armed carrying personnel will walk into an airport and surrender his arm to the aviation security. Why does he feel comfortable doing that? Because he believed that arm is safe with that security man. And on arrival to wherever the passenger will be traveling to, there is another aviation security officer at the other end that will retrieve that arm and surrender it to that passenger before he or she leaves the airport. So try to follow all these security guidelines. Don't waste your time also asking questions to people that may not be able to help you. There are enough synergies in all our terminals to guide you. When you can't find any signage that will naturally answer your question. We have information desks. Go there, ask your question, and you'll be rightly guided. Thank you very much. Thank you.